Okay, so I read an Instagram quote that I've seen many times. It's like, you gotta fight for your recovery and your sobriety every day, like how you fought for your drug addiction or your alcoholism, and I can't, I can't agree with it. I disagree with it. Fighting for your sobriety is detrimental to your well-being. When I was fighting for my sobriety, it, it, it put an unbearable weight on me. You ask anybody who has drug addiction or alcoholism or depression, or anything, you're always fighting and it's exhausting. Guess what a great way to relieve that is? Drinking, drugs. So the key is to stop fighting. At least it has been in my experience. I used to fight, I used to fight everything. And I get told this all the time. Keep up the fight, brother. Uh, stay strong, stay tough. Fight for your sobriety. No, that's horrible advice for me because I used to do that and it was exhausting, like I already said. And ever since I stopped fighting, huh, it's been great. The only reason why somebody wants to drink in the first place is because they like what alcohol does to them, right? Obviously, the dopamine rush and the, the high you get from it, it makes things easier. It lifts the weight of the world off of you. And that's all fighting does is put that weight back onto you. So you don't have to fight. Maybe you do, I don't know, I'm not you, but for me, I know I don't have to fight. I used to fight. It didn't end well. You gotta look at your addiction days, your alcoholism days, or if you're, if you're in those days right now, you gotta look at how it is right now for you. I bet you're fighting, because I did, I know I did, and me and you are a lot more similar than uh, where we are different. You're always fighting when you're drinking, when you're in your active, alcoholism and addiction you're always you're fighting everything you're fighting yourself you're fighting other people you're fighting your boss your job you relate you're fighting your relationships you have all these defense mechanisms built into your ego right you're in denial you're delusional you don't like to admit you're wrong you're very fragile and you put up these big walls to protect yourself you love to be a victim and when i say you like i'm not specifically talking to you i'm i'm talking about myself right i loved being a victim if anybody challenged me i took it as a shot against my ego and i had to prove myself if somebody didn't like me i would put it upon myself to try to change their opinion about me i would try to sound all intelligent around them so they'd think i was intelligent and try to impress them i'd try to change my appearance so that they'd like me i'd, try, I'd buy fancy cars and outfits to look good for them even if they didn't like me it's silly but I did that, that was me fighting. When you fight, you are prone to depression, you are prone to anxiety, loneliness. Well, like, let's look at what loneliness is. That's a big one, especially in sobriety, when your whole life is changing. You give up the booze, now you, like a lot of people, including myself, you give up the lifestyle that you had. Maybe you have drinking buddies, You're, you can't really be around them anymore if they're still doing that, especially in early sobriety. But you get lonely, right? And you feel like you're the black sheep. And I, I used to feel all these things, but you're not. There's nothing special enough about you to be a black sheep. That's just, you're just fighting. That's you fighting. You thinking that you're a black sheep or you don't belong in this world or you don't belong wherever is just a defense mechanism because you don't really know who you are. You don't have confidence in who you are. It's almost like you're living in a teenage angst phase of your life. And I'm talking about me. I keep saying you, but what I mean is me it just helps me kind of try to comprehend what I'm saying to myself. I don't know. When I say you, I, I don't know you. I'm only talking about, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but, but maybe it's something you need to hear regardless. So yeah, you. <laughs> but yeah, you're just like living in that teenage angst phase and you got this chip on your shoulder. That's all fighting is. If you're lonely, it's because you don't have confidence in yourself to be who you really are around other people. A lot of people will say, well, I can't connect to anybody in sobriety. I need alcohol to be able to do that. I feel lonely. I can't go and meet new people. And the reason why you can't, from my experience, is because you just got these walls built up. And I used to make the excuse, well, I'm introverted. I'm a, I'm a very introverted person, but I could go out today into public, completely sober, start talking with people and connect with people and make friends. Today, I could do that. And it's not because I'm not introverted, I'm extroverted. It's because I stopped fighting who I am. I'm no longer worried about what other people think of me. If I have something to say to somebody, I just say it. They, they're either gonna accept it or they're gonna not. They're either gonna connect with it or not. It's not up to me to do all the connecting to other people to not to, you know, kind of fulfill that loneliness void. It's also up to them to be able to connect. It's not just on me. And that goes for everything. 
That goes for everything in life. It's not just on you. You're trying to date somebody, right? And you can't connect with them. Well, you just got to be you. And they got to be able to reciprocate that that version of you and accept you. And if they don't, it's never going to work anyways. It's not just on you. But for them to be able to accept you and connect with you, you got to be you. And you got to get rid of these walls that you put up and these defense mechanisms that you put up. And you got to stop fighting it. You just got to accept it. And then some people aren't going to like you. That's just the way it is. That's how you make friends in sobriety. That's how you connect with people in sobriety. And it all starts inside of you. It it doesn't start out there. It's all inside. But what are some other battles that you fight? Like I know work's a very stressful one. People go to work and they're all stressed out and anxious and miserable because their boss is making a dumb call or their coworkers just annoy them. You have too many expectations for people to do things the way you think it needs to be done. Who cares if it's a stupid call that your boss is making? Let them make it. Do your part. Hey, if it's your job to say, hey, I don't think that's a good idea. This is what I think. And they don't listen. you did done your part. Accept it. The battles we fight, we're only fighting it because we can. We have trouble accepting things the way they are. We need to let things be and play out on their own. Without trying to force things and manipulate things into being a certain way that we want it to be. Thinking that something needs to be a certain way for us to be okay inside. Because when you're going to do that, you're going to fight those battles. You're going to not be okay inside because things are never going to turn out the way you think they should or they need to be for you. Something could turn out the exact same way that you envision for it to turn out, which will help you. But it's not going to help you in the first place because that was never the solution to your issue. Your issue is just the fact that, I don't know, some about alcoholics and drug addicts, they just love to fight. (laughs) You love to fight everything. It's almost as if it's like you have no control in your life because alcohol owns you. So you fight all these other things because you want to get some control in your life. When the answer is to just let go of all control, trying to control situations, trying to fight for situations, trying to fight whatever is what got you in this mess in the first place. Now let's talk about fighting the urge and the cravings to drink. Why do we get cravings? Why do we have a desire to drink? Well, it's because we love what alcohol does to us. We love it. Otherwise, we wouldn't drink it. When I drank alcohol, it did amazing things to me. It made me okay in here. So why am I not okay in here? Because I'm fighting everything else out there, everything in here. I'm just fighting. When you take care of all that stuff, when you stop fighting, heck, man, you just... In my experience, that's what has been the biggest reliever of that desire to drink. Let things be the way they are. You cannot save people. You cannot change people. You have to accept people for exactly who they are. You cannot expect things for people. Expectations just are premeditated resentments. You expect, like I expect my girlfriend to do this behavior. She doesn't do it. Now I'm resentful at her. Whose fault is that? I'm upset because she didn't cook me dinner. Whose fault is that? My fault. Shouldn't have never expected her to do it in the first place. It's not fair to expect things of people. You gotta let those things go. Expectations. You gotta accept people for exactly who they are. You gotta accept your boss for who they are. You gotta accept society for what it is. You don't like the political atmosphere right now? Accept it. Work on it. Every single time you get one of those thoughts in your head, this makes me just accept things for the way they are because by not accepting things, you are fighting things and then you are going to want to drink and now you have to fight that desire to drink off and that's tough. And you people can do it. Like I see people fight that desire to drink off their whole lives, but they are exhausted and they are miserable. You don't want to live that way. I don't want to live that way. I want to be at peace. Another way, so the, another way to not fight things is to forgive people who have wronged you whether or not they were in the wrong or whether or not you've made it up in your mind that they are wrong whether or not you were actually hurt or whether or not you're just perceiving it as being hurt forgiveness goes a long long way you carry the weight of resentment and anger towards somebody who's wronged you 
that is a weight on you, in your soul that is toxic to you. It's not the person that's toxic to you who wronged you. It's the, it's the anger you hold inside of you that you are unable to let go or not willing to let go. That is what's toxic to you. Other people aren't toxic to you. That's, a, that's like a secret to life. Other people are not toxic. Your perception of other people and you holding on to that belief system is toxic. If somebody's not right for me, I need to understand that and just let them be, accept them for who they are, not try to change them and let them be, let it go. But if somebody's toxic, or sorry, I'm going against what I'm saying, but somebody's not right for me and then I, it gets all in my head and I let them stay in my life and then I start saying things like, oh, they're toxic, they're just such a toxic person for me. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Who's responsible for that? Them? No, because they are the way they are and they're not going to change. And honestly, it's not up to you to make them change. It's up. It's on me. I'm the one carrying that burden. Somebody owes me an apology. I might not ever get it. So why expect it? Would it be nice? Sure. Is it necessary? No. You do not need apologies to forgive people. And being scared. What about if you have fear of things? Like I used to get so much anxiety going to work because I wasn't able to accept things the way they were. I used to get so much anxiety about not being good enough, right? If I was in the middle of a conversation, if there was a group of guys like at my work, they were all having a conversation or I would be too scared to butt in and say what I wanted to say because I was scared they would think I'm stupid. I wasn't able to accept that it doesn't matter if they think I'm stupid because I probably said a lot of stupid things anyways. Who cares? doesn't matter. And that's what you got to work on is every time you're starting to think these little things, just try to readjust your thinking and just let it go. Just tell yourself, okay, that's, it's fine. It's not, that's the way it is. It's not my business. Cause like 99% of the stuff going on in your head is not your business. You just keep it in your head like a sponge and absorb it all from all over the place and hold on to it. You gotta just let it go. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. Just, oh, just let it go. Oh, just forgive them. Oh, just don't be afraid of that. Just trust the process. I get it. Easier said than done. Watching a YouTube video, hearing me yell this stuff at you is not going to fix that. I had to go to therapy. I had to go to AA. I had to go to rehab. I had to dedicate and uh, commit to these kinds of things to be able to let these things go to the point where I had like an epiphany and it happened all suddenly. I remember my rehab counselor drilled it in my head that that is not my job to worry about. That issue that I thought I had is not my job to worry about. It's nobody's job to worry about. It was about like the issue was there was a, like my grandfather who was an alcoholic was like, I was angry at him because the way he treated us when we were young and like how he treated my mom and we just had this weird relationship growing up and like I was super resentful and the rehab counselor just drilled it into my head. That is not my thing to worry about. And then I was able to let it go. Yeah, it's not my thing to worry. That was between him and my mom. And yeah, I was a kid and like I, for some reason I carried it with me. Like alcoholics carry the weirdest things with them. Same thing with an ex-girlfriend, right? I I mean, relationships are tricky because you absorb that stuff. You absorb that baggage. You carry it around like, like one of those bag on a stick with you you drag your relationship baggage around with you and it taints your perception of relationships moving forward and you take that tainted perception into your next relationship or you just have that view and it just it's awful like i had one guy i'm working with in sobriety he uh like he i told him i was telling him about my relationship with my girlfriend he's like oh don't get married don't ever get married you'll regret it and then i told him Man, just because you've had a bad experience doesn't mean I'm going to have a good experience or a bad experience. Just because your relationship, and I told him, that's not your, my relationship is not your, like you don't know, you know what I'm trying to say. Like it's not your business to tell me not to get married because of your prejudiced thoughts on marriage that you have based on your experience that some things of it are true and some things aren't true. They're some of these things you're just thinking in your head to make you feel better about yourself. But I get a lot of that. I work with a lot of men in sobriety and they're, they're very angry towards their ex-wives and their ex-spouses and, their, and the women in their life. And it's, I try to help them get through that. And they are able to, some of them are able to come and have forgiveness and let things go. And some of them hold on to it 
And the, guess what? Most of the time, the ones that continue drinking are the ones that are not doing well are the ones that are angry and they hold on to that anger. They're fighting things. They're fighting these battles that they don't have to. Oh, I just wanted to say another thing about resentments. Alcoholics and resentment and anger towards the other people are things that have happened to them. Like, obviously that's what anger and resentment is. Alcoholics and anger are spaghetti and meatballs, right? They're mashed potatoes and gravy. They go together. I have yet to meet an alcoholic who does not have a grudge or anger or are resentful to one or many people. I, I, and the funny thing is, is I often talk with alcoholics and they say, oh, I'm not angry at anybody. I don't have a grudge. And I just, I kind of like say, yeah, we'll get to that because I, I could sit there and talk with somebody for 10 minutes and I, and if they're honest with me and they answer my questions, I'll be able to pinpoint their resentments and their anger that they have towards other people. That anger is just a battle you're fighting that you don't have to fight. And I get it's easier said than done to let it go. I do understand that. I've been there. Us alcoholics, we love to put our walls up. We love to be a victim. We love to avoid responsibility and accountability. But when we do those things, when we take it upon ourselves, we are able to accept things the way they are. We are able to gain confidence in ourselves and trust in ourselves. Accept the world for what it is. Accept other people for what they are. Accept whatever for what it is and just exist within it without the need to fight. Fighting is exhausting. You do not have to fight. Give yourself permission to not fight. You don't have to fight it. Whatever it is you're fighting. Obviously, don't listen to anything I say. I'm a YouTuber just spewing stuff on here. Stuff that I believe based on my own recovery. Other people's recovery, like your recovery, your sobriety, your life is different than mine. I'm, don't take any of this as like therapist advice. Go see a therapist. That's my... Uh, advice. Go see a therapist. Go to AA. Go to a smart recovery. Go to a support group like that. Go to church. Go talk to a priest. Don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> this, I'm just trying to share my experience with all this stuff. But yeah, I gave myself permission to stop controlling things. To let things be. To let me be. To let me just exist the way I am and not be worried. Okay, one example of fighting that alcoholics usually, uh, that alcoholics tend to have a battle they tend to have is when you first get sober you have no idea who you are you have no idea what your identity is or who you are as a person because you only know drinking you only know the, the previous life and when you get sober you're taking away all that stuff right and you have no idea it's almost like you go through an existential crisis and you get worried and you have a fear that you're not going to be remembered right as somebody that you want to be remembered as you your legacy how are people going to remember me that's not exclusive to alcoholics that's I mean a lot of people have that fear and the, like an, I had an identity crisis when I first got sober and I thought well I got to carve out this new identity for myself and the answer is no I did not have to do that so yeah I thought I had to carve out this identity to impress other people because I wasn't okay with myself and I thought if I could make other people like me then, I, then I'd be okay with myself that's not how it works but the fact of the matter is is you don't have to be anybody because it doesn't actually really matter. It only matters to us in our heads that we need to be somebody. We need to be remembered as something, but we don't. We need to have a legacy, but we don't. That's one of the things we fight. It's one of the things that exhausts us, is our identity and who we are and how we're gonna be remembered. Here's the thing about how you're gonna be remembered and who you are. You don't get a say in how people perceive you, right? Because that's all it is. All it is, your identity and who you are as a person is how other people see you. You wanna be something, and you want other people to see you as that, then you'll be okay. But other people aren't gonna see you as that anyways, so it's all kinda, of, it, like you're, it's ironic, you're, you're fighting yourself. A perfect example, and I don't know if I wanna say this because the guy's dead now, but Matthew Perry, right? He died of that, like he drowned in his hot tub or something, he was, he was on benzodiazepines or whatever. And I, I mean no disrespect to him, but it's a perfect example after he died, he there was all these news stories about him saying that, like a soundbite of him saying, like they were trying to, uh, like they were using soundbites to kind of remember him, right? 
he said in one of like in his book or in, on a news thing that he said, I don't want to be remembered as the guy from Friends. I want to be remembered as like a guy who helped other people, which is noble. That's a good thing. But here's the thing. You don't get a say in how other people are going to remember you. If people are going to remember, remember you as the guy from Friends, that's that, that's on them. That's how they remember you. You don't get a say in how other people are going to see you or how people are going to remember you. That's not on you. You just have to live your life and people are going to see you based on your who you are and your actions. And that's how it works. You don't get to tell people that you want to be seen such and such way because they're going to see you how they see you. I hope that makes sense. Identity crisis is a major stressor. It's a major uh, like uh, anxiety inducer and depression because you, your vision of how you want to be seen isn't aligning with other people and how they see you. And then that makes you depressed because you're not getting the response uh, you think you need. Huge source of depression, huge source of anxiety. When your vision of yourself does not in li- align with other people's vision of you. That's a big battle people use, or a big battle that people fight every day without even realizing how exhausting that is. Because it doesn't matter who you are. And that is sometimes a tough pill to swallow because people think they need to be a certain thing. I, my personal belief system is that, like I'm kind of an existentialist. Not much matters in this world. However, being, like the beauty of humanity is you can create, like we have very complex minds and complex needs and you are able to create like a meaning for your own life but you don't get to decide how other people see you if that makes sense they will see you how they see you you can create meaning for your own life by living your life and doing your doing you in your life without fighting things and then other people will just see you how they see you and that's that's okay it's okay some people will like you and some people won't some people will remember you and some people won't just the way it is Some people will think you did good in this world. Some people won't care or they'll think you did bad. None of it matters. What matters is that you have meaning in your own life that you create for yourself. And and if even that doesn't matter because you're going to die anyways, just like everybody. One day humanity might become extinct too. Who knows? None of it matters. Humanity is just like a very fraction. Like our time on this earth has just been a fraction of as long as the earth's been alive. It doesn't, nothing really matters. And I'm not trying to say that in a depressing way. Like it's actually been very empowering to me to see things that way, to view things that way. Nothing really matters and that's the beauty of it because you can create a life for yourself that has meaning for you, but it still doesn't really matter and it makes it easier to accept everything. Anyways, that's enough about that. Don't listen to anything I say. It's kind of getting weird here. Like there are days where I still have no idea who I am or what I'm going to be. And honestly, I'm okay with that. That's okay. I don't need to be anybody to have a good life. I don't need to be anybody to have meaning. I just do my thing. I build my computers on a separate YouTube channel in my spare time as a hobby that I love. I have my dogs. I have my job. I have my girlfriend. I have my family. A couple other little hobbies, right? My couple buddies. And that's my life. And that's okay. I don't need to be anybody. I can be whatever you think that is. That's what I am. You can think of me as whatever you want and that's what I am. That's my identity to you. To another person, it's something completely different. To another person, it's something completely different. So I gave up trying to label myself as anything because I honestly don't know.